That will be on the tour. That's and great. And again, the date's November 16th and 17th. Okay, young Rick Michalis joins us on the program. Tell us a little bit about the house, Rick. Well, <laughs> just kidding. We just you had a nice conversation about, about how that was not pull, my... Pull that mic a little closer to your face. Not my uh, portion of the job, but yeah. Yeah, we're <laughs> nah, happy to sponsor and What's be a up? part of it. Well, we're closing in the, the year here. It's been a really good year at Michelle's Corporation. and so, so you're on a calendar year. Yeah. So you're saying that uh, almost five years ago, uh, when I uh, burnt the house down, that that kind of capped off the year. I think that's where the trajectory changed for yeah. us. It was all up from there. No, yeah. Uh, it's, it's been a good year. So we're happy with where we're at and had some record months. And we're just trying to close out kind of the, as the cold weather sneaks in on us, get the exterior repairs we can get done, done. Yeah. And yeah. We, uh, when I, the day that I burnt down the house with a toaster, and I, we were reflecting on it because I did a thing on Channel 13 about it because it's five years on Black Friday. Yeah. So, and I recall you were just a snot nosed kid and Whoa. you showed up. Show a little respect. I, I was a little snot nosed after all of the work we did inside. I yeah. mean, there's but quite you, a bit of stuff. You, show, you showed up. You were right there. With, yeah. You were, you were hauling equipment around, as I, was, I recall. I was on call then, yeah. So that was back when I was still a technician in the field, and obviously we offered 24-hour emergency services. So yep. at that time, I was one of our lead on-call technicians. So, you know, that Saturday morning as you came in to do the show, your wife woke up and found what you had done. Yep. Uh, yeah. I was one of the first to, to get out there and try and clean it up. That's right. Uh, Rick was there, and then uh, later they were there, and I we, it was the first day we ever ran our train. So I was at work even after burning the house down and uh it rekindled and i think rick or one of his we, uh, yeah, teammates was out, was yeah. nice enough to call the fire department again so they came out and it was like a wall cavity where some insulation yeah. had been kind yeah. of yeah oh my gosh threw a little more water on it and rick's going huh that's some more, here's more, some more damage more, right there more dried equipment for your basement yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> more billable for us so, so but you yeah. guys were there i mean think about that that was black friday and they, I don't know how many Michelis guys, how many trucks were there, but it's not they're just on the call. Mitig- it's 20, 24-7 is 24-7. Yeah. It's just not the mitigation. You guys are there as a counselor, okay? You're going to need to get in touch with your insurance company. Right. You're going to need this, this, and this. You, you don't think about not having clean underwear. You don't Most think people about- have never filed a claim before. Well, I mean, no. you have insurance for a reason, but you don't ever want to have to call them, right? Right. But we're, we're also helping kind of counsel how you're going to have to get through this and it's going to be an eight-month process or a four-month process or how long you're going to be out of your house. And it helps uh, the homeowner understand what's in front of them, what they're going to be encountering as we help rebuild that home. You're basically in shock. You've seen your house go yeah. up. You this saw your is wedding, so your true. Your wedding pictures, you yep. know, all the pictures of the Everything kids. Everything for going, decades oh that yeah. you've kept in closets and, you know. Your dad was out there and he, you know, your dad kind of likes to, to move to get the client to the point, you yeah. know. And so he goes, now, you know. You're going to be out of here for a couple months. I looked and it's like, Richard, I'm going to be out of here for almost a year. He goes, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, He's trying to, you don't want to give false blue. hope. I no. mean, yeah. Yeah. No. But no, it, it is great to be able to work with the clients in that state of shock. You know, the first responders leave, the fire department's gone, and you're left with, What do you do? I know. Exactly. You know, it so, really it's weird. I felt the same way after I got married. The guests all <laughs> left. We were in the car. I go, Now what? You know, I just like, you're in shock. You really yeah. don't. It's yeah. one of those life. I was moments. saying earlier when I uh, so you know you don't have anything, right? We don't have any clothes. We had to so that night after Literally we left work, wearing, yeah, we went and it well, was Black you, Friday. I got underwear and T-shirts at half off. Heck of a deal. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but you know what? Insurance didn't even know what you spent. Half no, of it, yeah. yeah. I felt bad enough about causing them. Well, we're, <laughs> thanks for coming, buddy. It was a lot of money. Yeah, it's good to yeah. Have you. It's it's great to be here. I mean, uh, thanks or you know with. Uh, Halloween being done, it's kind of nice to have the holiday season here at Solvin. So, yeah. Yeah, come through, see the trees. All right, so you are my target. Now, you guys don't have kids yet. Not yet. But you're Did the... buy a t- house. You're the... T- okay, we're Keep getting there. So, yeah. wait a minute. Let me guess. You got a dog, right? No, you have to talk to my wife about that. I've been asking for a dog no for dog. years. No dog. You get kids. She said right? maybe this spring. No, yeah, we're yeah. not getting a dog. Let's get kids first. Yeah. Uh, so, the Sullivan Express, we have... We're kind of targeting your age. We have something ah. called the late train. Okay. So you buy a ticket, you get on the late train. And you don't come back. No, you go to. You don't remember coming back. No, you get the whole experience going to the North Pole. <laughs> Santa will be there to mess around with you. But really, then uh, Cork and Cracker is there for wine tasting yeah. and dessert. It's a little experience for uh, you, you, the, the millennials, young adults. I'll, uh, I'll have to get a group together. That would be fun. Yeah. I, would, I would encourage that. So, All right, there was something. Oh, the other thing I wanted to ask you is your, uh, the big news in uh, 
Rick is very involved with rugby and youth rugby. Yeah. And yeah. as a, a played and then now coaches. But uh, the Broad Ripple, people don't realize that Indianapolis is a hot spot for youth rugby. Which I had is, no which, idea. I know. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> it's, but, you know, the second most popular sport in the world, but here in Indiana, it's just not as well known. But it is but on compared, to the, stage, compared to the United States, yeah. we are known. But uh, the Royal Irish Rugby and the Broad Ripple Rugby Club have become one. Yeah, so, you know, Royal Irish Rugby is nationally renowned. I played there. Uh, your son's played there. Yep. Multiple national titles, multiple state titles. The Broad Ripple Youth Program, which is fifth to eighth grade, is now merging with Royal Irish to kind of be one big group to help with recruiting, help get the Royal Irish high school kids where they need to be. So upcoming November 10th at Bishop Chittard will be hosting a clinic for anybody who wants to try it. Um, any kid, you know, we have both uh, boys and girls on a co-ed team, and then 7th and 8th is all boys. So Now, you're a rugby player. Look straight at me. Have you, yeah. had, have you broken your nose? This nose is not straight anymore. Yeah, no. did you break uh, your yeah, nose? Yeah, it was, oh, uh, So listen, uh, the, the great thing about rugby, I think that every one of these kids will say, parents don't know the rules. <laughs> so no. they can't get upset. I, and or... you know what? And the other thing is that in rugby, like when you're in football, and I love football, but it's like if you're a lineman, you're a lineman, right? Right. In rugby, you may be scoring. You can be – everyone can score. That's it's a, been one of the yeah. selling points on our recruiting trips. Hey, I yeah. see that you're a striper. You probably haven't, you know, touched the ball in the five years you've been playing football. Here, you can run and score and do it, you know, right. both sides of it. So it's it's a really fun sport, and I'm really yeah. excited about it. And, you know, the other interesting thing in the uh, – before we got to run out get out of here, but in the NFL, they've been using and teaching at the NFL level rugby tackling. Rugby tackling. Yeah. It's, it's safe. It's safe. Do, it yep. doesn't hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's still, well, it just prevents it'll leave a mark. head, neck injury. And yeah. people say, okay, well, you're not wearing pads. It's got to be a dangerous sport. But comparative to the other contact sports, the injuries are much, much yeah. lower. It looks That's like you wrap up and roll. It's like, a, it's like a kind of a wrestling well, tap. Right, yeah. and, you, and yeah. you can't just throw – I mean, you have to safely take someone to the ground, but you really you're trying to poach a ball, so you're trying to hold right. people up. Right, you're not even and, focused yeah. on laying down a big smack. It's no. more control the ball, and yeah. 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 So, Rick, so, great hanging out yeah. with you, man. Thanks for Rick having me. Rick it's the Michalis Corporation, the number 844-FIX-INDY. That's 844-FIX-INDY, the Michalis Corporation. Construct, renovate, restore.